everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks so much for clicking on today's video. We are out here at the Surfside Jetty in Freeport, Texas. It's a gorgeous day. We've got a little bit of overcast, some slight showers in the forecast, but uh, we've got quite a bit of tidal movement and uh, I'm hoping for the best. Today we brought out some live shrimp and uh, let's see how we can do. Yeah, whenever you go and you buy your shrimp and the water looks that dirty, you're better off just going down there with a bucket and getting some clean, fresh water. There we go right there. Now your shrimp will thank you for it. They'll be a lot more livelier whenever it comes time to speckle trout, getting a good eyeball on them. All right, what we're gonna do is set up a slip cork rig. Whew, man, that took forever. I just kept messing up the rig. It's like I forgot how to tie a slip cork rig. All right, let's get our first shrimp on the line. Let's start seeing what we can do. All right, here we go. We're fishing about 12 feet down. You wanna make sure that if you're fishing deep, you cast well beyond the rocks because they extend a good 10 to 15 feet beyond the surface right here of what you see. You fish too close, then your shrimp is gonna get down there in them rocks. You're gonna lose a rig. There we go, I'm getting bit already. Something small though. Usually whenever, there we go, we got them. Let's see what we got. That was really quick. There's a nice old sand trout right there. Right there in the corner of the mouth. I haven't really done anything by way of cooking with sand trout. I'm gonna throw this fella inside the cooler. Let's clip his gills and uh, we're gonna set him inside the Ego cooler. There we go, just the perfect size. All right. When baiting uh, the shrimp, normally I'll take a number 10 or 12 treble hook and go right through the horn just like that right there it's a pretty tough part your shrimp ain't gonna get lost little guy sand trout all right Let's see how long it takes to get another bite a couple of sand trout and that should be good enough for the family i'm hoping that the specs will start to bite I'm gonna answer a few questions that I always get, and that's always concerning the jetty. Hey Mark, which jetty is better to fish, the Surfside or the one behind me, the Quintana? There's really no solid answer. It just depends on the conditions. I mean, if I could ask the fish, hey, which one do y'all prefer? Then we'd really know. Uh, my decision-making process is based off of the wind. So as I'm facing out towards the beach side, if the wind is to my back, this is the side that I wanna be at. So if it's coming in out of the west, I tend to prefer this jetty right here. If it's coming in out of the east, then I prefer the Quintana. As long as the wind is to my back, uh-oh, uh, yep, just lost our shrimp. Um, as long as it's to my back, that's what I prefer to fish. Now, if it's coming in from the south, which is right over here at the end of the jetty, then I'll still tend to prefer this one right here. There we go. Got us another sand trout right there. You really got no size limit for sand trout, so anything that you catch is fair game. And this guy is pretty stocky. Two small tiny little fillets, but a couple of more of these, which they're really plentiful down there. And when the bite's on, you can expect to catch quite a few. Clip the gills, put them in the chest. So although it looks like my leader line is like a foot long, uh, that's a bit deceiving because what happens is that cork slips all the way up to about 12 feet. Y'all can see this little bobber stop, the green thing right there on my yellow line. That is 12 feet. So as soon as the cork hits that, that's whenever my shrimp stops sinking down. 
Oh, there we go. That was really fast. Looks like we're gonna have some sand trout today. All right, buddy, it's your lucky day. Check this fella out really fast. Look at that. He's been hit before. All his scales have been just taken off. Probably a dolphin or some other style game fish. So that guy earned his freedom. There we go. Well, it went under. I missed the bite though. Kind of like slow motion right before my eyes where you see it go under and it's like, uh, should I, I mean, what's going on? But just like that, got him. <laughs> this guy's got a little bit more weight. You know the beauty of using this rig right here? He's got a little bit more weight. That's because we kind of hooked them on the side of the mouth. Ooh, the smallest fish that we caught of the day. We're gonna put this fella back. He's got a little bit more growing to do. Let's get the pliers, four sips for this job. Tiny little fella. All right, buddy. So what I was saying about the uh, beauty of using this rig right here is that you don't have to come out with a massive rod like half the jetty anglers out here. I'd be willing to bet that they've got some steelhead rods because you can actually see it. I mean, those are about 12 foot long. That's in order to use one of those big, massive, long uh, jetty cork systems, like the jetty corks that they use. This is the slip cork. And I get away with just coming out here with my regular setups because you can reel all your slack in. So no big rod needed. Just come out here with what you have, even though it is a uh, cumbersome task to tie this darn thing. Like I said, uh, it took me <laughs> darn near 30 minutes to tie this rig up because I kept messing it up. But once you get it right, you'll be set. There we go. Oh yeah, this one's got a little bit of size. He's like the first two. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna let this one go. Mm, you know what? Let's see. It's about 11 inches. I'll try to keep something that's about 12. Let's try and get us a nice, big, juicy one. I mean, look how small these guys are right here. Look at this. That's what I was meaning by we've got ourselves a mixed bag. I mean, that is tiny. If there was a bird out here, we'd feed them, but uh, anyhow. Here you go. This one's got a little bit of size to him. Right there. Not a bad shrimp. Oh, got gotcha. Those are the casts I like. <laughs> you just barely cast out there and then all of a sudden it just goes down. We keep catching all the freaking nursery guys, man. Nothing but tiny little dudes. Now I'm starting to get greedy. I'm like, hey, stop biting, man. Yeah, just waiting to get out of that nursery and then we'll uh, catch our four fish that I want to take home and eat. All right, that is it. We've been waiting for probably a good five minutes to see if we get bit. Nothing happened. It's not that there's no fish over here. We're catching a bunch of small ones. Let's uh, swap it out to, uh, or switch, switch it up. Come to this side over here and see what we can get. Oh, immediately. Oh, he just got off, dang it. All right, let's get us another nice size shrimp on and see if we can catch us a bigger fish on that side. Kind of stinks to be at the bottom of the food chain, man. You gotta love shrimp, they taste so good, so you know what the fish are really loving about them. There we go. That guy had some good weight to him too, and we got an outgoing tide. You can see the cork moving out towards the open water. Telltale sign. But you also got a buoy station right over there that lets you know and you just tap right into that. Oh God, there it is.
still same size though this guy's a little bit bigger though he's probably going to hit that 12 inch mark oh just shy of 12 inches it's your lucky day bud you know what on second thought we're going to keep this guy i mean he was just a like one eighth maybe a sixteenth of an inch shy of being a 12 incher so he's going inside the ice bag a nice big one right here guy's got a little red tint to him curious as to why they turn red i know they turn red whenever they get hot and you start cooking their cooking them um not too sure why he would be reddish inside the little uh, bait bucket all right just need one more that's going to be a good solid lunch for us. Man, that was quick. They are plentiful out here inside the channel. They're biting the way they were whenever I first started over there on the bay side. This guy is really big. He's perfect. Definitely going to go inside the ice bag for sure. Oh, he's got gut hooks, so we got no choice but to keep him. Right. Let's finish doing the deed, and then we'll get him into the bag. That should be good. Come on, baby. We had, got hit really good on that last cast. It went down really quick. Just like that. This guy's got a little bit of ump to him. <laughs> I, said, I said it the last time and uh, it's like, I was just amazed at how tiny the fish was whenever I brought him in. Oh, this is a speckle trout. It looks like a speck. Oh, no, that is just a big old huge sand trout. Oh, my God. These are what I've been looking for right here. Man, we catch a couple more of these, and wow. This is a nice size, fella. That's a, a nice one right there. Let's get the hook out, see how big he is. Oh, 14 and a half inches. Yeah, he's definitely going inside the ice bag. And we got him. All right, this guy is pulling hard, too. It'll take a little bit more time. I mean, they look like specks because of how big they are. I don't know if he's going to be a speckle trout or just one of those sand trout. It's just a big old sand trout. I'm telling you what, they look like specks because of their size. But, man, that is a big fella right there. Got him right in the corner of the mouth, too. Gosh, these guys are big there we are that one went down quick this guy's got a little bit of bottom into him too it's another big big old sand trout boy these guys are massive if <laughs> you didn't know any better they look like speckled trout as you're bringing them up about 15 inches somewhere around there not a bad day of fishing we're gonna hurry up and load all this stuff up right here and then make our way over to a boat ramp that has a fish fillet station so that I don't have to bring all these scraps back home with me plus you can feed the crabs and all the birds like the gulls and stuff like that and uh, we'll get home fry these fellas up um, yeah so I hope you enjoyed the video I definitely had some fun I'm telling y'all what live shrimp is king nothing really beats it out everything in the water <laughs> everything in the water at some point in time of their life has fed off of shrimp especially whenever they're young so it is just the perfect solution to keeping the skunks at bay all right i am pooped it's very hot i gotta hurry up and get home ready to go. A little bit of olive oil and some butter just to prevent the butter from burning. Once it starts smoking, you are good. All right, so here we go. Taste test of the blackened sand trout. 
Here we are. Uh, yeah, try it with Uncle Mark. Tell Uncle Mark to let you try it so you can tell everybody if it's good or not. Uh oh, uh -oh. no, 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 don't touch the camera, Papa. Taste Uncle Mark's fish and tell everybody if it's good. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. It's definitely not my favorite. Uh, we've ate half the plate and uh, the firmer pieces, I don't know why, but the firmer ones taste a lot better than some of the other pieces. So it's just kind of a, a mixed bag. Um, I'm not a fish lover per se. I will eat fresh fish and that's like the only way that I eat fish. It has to be something that I had just caught or I know was just caught and then cooked. Anyhow, I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm gonna take back the five that I gave it and it's gonna get a seven. So uh, not too bad, but some of them, well, they don't even deserve to be on the plate. All right, so that's gonna do it. Until next time, tight line. Show.